Hello, supervisor. May we help you? What do you think? Did I do a correct job? I did. Okay, very good. He's happy. But this There's an old curiosity shop. Every once in a while I go by there for the fond recollections that lie there. one who does this let's say you're watching a period movie you know something set during the Civil War or the Great Depression or even the 1960s and you're watching the movie and you're spying on all of the things that you see on the set all the props aha there's a fiberglass lampshade that looks like it was designed by umpty 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 ump oh there's a Frank Art lamp on that radio. Oh, I recognize the dishes on the table. That's Franciscan, 19 something, something, something. Well, I was watching one of my favorite period movies the other day. It's a film called Brighton Beach Memoirs. It was a, uh, written as a play by Neil Simon. And the first time I saw it was actually in the theater, uh, not the play, but the movie, in, uh, with uh, featuring Jonathan Silverman, I think the actor who, who plays the, the boy. And I saw the film in 1986. My grandmother and I went to the movies together, and uh, of course she enjoyed it because it reminded her of the years gone by. But anyway, the film is set in Brighton Beach, a neighborhood in Brooklyn, down near Coney Island and Manhattan Beach. And uh, it starts out in 1937, and it must end in 1939 because at the end of the movie, the family is listening to, I think, uh, Hitler invading Poland, which was 1939. So the film runs from, uh, from 1937 to 1939. Watch this clip and tell me what's wrong. Not this clip, this one. Could have been you in that car with him. I warned you the first day about those people. Did you catch it? Now, I just gave you a hint a second ago. Let's watch it again, but before we do, remember, this film takes place in 1937 to 1939. Watch. Could have been you in that car with him. I warned you the first day about those people. You still didn't figure it out? <clears throat> Look at it one more time. Could have been you in that car with him. I warned you the first day about those people. Mm -hmm. Did you catch the, uh, the main actress there? Putting her anchor hawking fire king Jane Ray Jada into the sink? in 1937, but Jane Ray wasn't made until the mid 40s. So that ruined the whole movie for me. Not exactly, but am I the only one who does that? Please tell me that I'm not the only one who does that. I need to get out. Don't we all? Look folks, hang in there, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna be all right. Go, go drink your coffee. Oh, by the way, many of you were screaming for another episode of Roberta and her Drano nightmare. Well, I'm going to give the fans what they want. We're going to leave Roberta where she is, but let's go see what's going on with Nancy and her bad complexion. Does she get the man? Well, this is from a 1934 Saturday Evening Post magazine. Let's see what happens.
Betsy. You keep eating those yeast tablets. You get your man. Hey, I don't want to stand in the way of anybody's happiness. <laughs> Lots of you got this right. Now, how did you figure it out? Uh, did you go back and look at my old videos? I thrifted this a year and a half ago and am keeping the example that I bought. But this one I just found before we all went on lockdown. And I'm going to sell this one. And those of you who thought it was a jug for oil or vinegar, you're wrong. No, you didn't pour water on your um, chrysanthemums with this either. What it is, is liquor jug. And uh, made by the Mohawk, well, we'll let you see the bottom. Uh, which you can't see very well, but this is Mohawk liquor. We'll try to get it to where you can see it. You see that? Mohawk either liquor or liqueur. And this actually held cream de mint liqueur. And there was a big uh, stopper in it made out of the same porcelain as uh, what you see here on the top, same color. That stopper is gone. So you'll have to be creative and figure out what you want to do with it. But it's in that wonderful sort of cream and green color combination that I love so much and which was so popular in the 1930s and 40s. We can date this to sometime after Prohibition, obviously. This kind of thing wouldn't have been marketed prior to FDR's repeal of the uh, Volstead Act. And uh, he did that pretty, pretty early on in his uh, administration, I think. In fact, that's one of the things he did within the first 100 days uh, after being sworn in in 1933. So we know this is something that was made sometime between 1933 and the early 40s. Uh, it's a porcelain or pottery liquor jug, and you can do all kinds of things with that. Kind of an Art Deco style, if we might say. Okay, so that's going to be up for sale in the old curiosity shop as soon as I can get around to it. I've got a whole room full of square to -its, but I'm running a little short on my round to -its at the moment. That was bad. Okay, I'm back because now I want to show you some things that are not yet listed in the old curiosity shop, but they should be within the next hour or so. I might even have these up and listed by the time I run this video. Um, so I'm only just giving you <laughs> a few little pieces that I've thrifted at a time because I don't want to run out of things that I've thrifted before we're able to get out and about again uh, and then just have to, you know, sit here and blow bubbles and go blah, 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 in all my videos. So I'm only showing you a few things, although I do have a, a pretty good stockpile. And all of us resellers know there's always the death pile. You know, I have one too. And the stuff that I have... Ugh. Well, it's okay stuff. It's just that I'm not really looking forward to listing it. Talk to you about that some other time. But let's first take a look at the things that I'm going to be listing, or as I just said, uh, they're probably already listed now. I've always wanted to find one of these little pinchette... Hold on for a second. My, my little thing here is going... Okay. So I'll let you see on the bottom. This is called uh, pincherette. Not cigarette, but pincherette. Can you see that on the bottom? Probably not. Pincherette. And this has a patent number on it. And this is made, um, this is made in the 1950s, probably the early 50s. And I'm not gonna argue with anybody about what those birds are, but I'm calling them pelicans. Now, these came, sometimes they are donkeys, or donkeys, as an old friend of mine used to call them, donkey, donkey. But these, I think, are, are actually uh, pelicans. See, they have feet. Don't pelicans have feet? Donkeys have legs. Anyway, <laughs> you can get different animals on here, and the idea is it's an ashtray, and you're supposed to, the little pinching part here is where you pinch your uh, cigarettes. Why, why, I guess when you're, I don't smoke, so I don't know why you would pinch them in there, but that's what you're supposed to do. So, um, sort of art deco, but really made in the 1950s when there was still a little bit of deco influence around a pincherette ashtray. Now, well, no, not now. Hold on for a second. These 
you saw in a thrift haul, but I'm finally actually getting them listed. I've got five of these Japan lusterware plates. I want you to see them. So there's five of these, 19, circa 1930. I'll, when I say circa 1930, that all almost always means 1925 to 1935. There's five of these. And these, which I like even better, I have four of these German plates. So if you just want a little dessert plate made in Germany, and these are nice, heavy porcelain plates in luster wear. Okay, so these are going up. This is really beautiful and somewhat unusual, and I know I showed it to you before, but it is listed. And it is a made in Japan. Little plate to serve on whatever you might wish in luster wear, and it's really beautifully done. And I will highlight for you these little gold butterflies. There's one right there flitting around. And where's his buddy? Right here. Okay, so there's two of them chasing each other around the perimeter of this plate. It's really beautiful. No chips, no cracks. Tea time, you'd be the hit of Bridge Club with that. Would you not? I think you would. Now this is a piece of Noritake. And it is a tiny lusterware, why am I whispering? It's a tiny lusterware swan. Um, I don't think this was an ashtray. It's really too small for a nut dish. I mean, you could fit about five peanuts in there. Uh, this would not hold toothpicks. I don't believe it's a spoon rest, although I don't have my teaspoon. You could put a little coffee spoon sort of down in there. I do whatever you want with it. Keep your false eyeball in there. Sometime I'm gonna dig that out. I had one grandmother, the maternal one, who threw away everything. She saved nothing. My maternal, I got that wrong, flip it. The maternal grandmother threw everything away. My paternal grandmother saved everything. When I say everything, my great grandfather had a glass eye and he had a spare. Now he was buried with one of the eyes. I'm not sure why they did that. I guess so that he wouldn't have like a sunken eye socket when you looked in the casket. But the second uh, eyeball was saved by my great, by my grandmother. Why? I don't know. Now the eyeball has been lost. I think somehow it wound up in somebody's marble collection. But I have the little Bakelite, it looks like a little ring box, you know, from like the 1930s, lined with crushed velvet. And you can see the indentation where that eyeball sat. That was his spare eye. Why am I telling you? Why am I? Oh, because I said you could put a false eyeball in that. Anyway, in storage somewhere around here, I have the little Bakelite case that held my great-grandfather's glass eye. That's weird, but my grandmother saved it. So you see, I, hey, I get it honestly. So I don't know what you, anybody know? Was there a whole set of these? Maybe it was a little individual salt. That could have been. Now this is a green made in Japan Noritake stamp. Yeah, see, elderly poodle, you see what happened? Yeah, you. Are you happy with yourself? <sighs> if he starts grooming you know where, I'll just sort of Gently lean over like that to be discreet. Okay, maybe we're gonna be okay. So, um, anybody know, did this come like in a set of six or eight or 10? This could have been just an individual salt. But anyway, it's a nice little lusterware Japan swan. You tired of hearing me run my mouth? Some people say, you run your mouth too much. Other people say, keep talking, keep talking. I'm gonna keep talking. Here's a little lemon server. When you see these little dishes, about four inches in diameter, and they have this handle that you can only fit one finger through, that's usually called a lemon server. 
so you can pass these around to all the ladies at the bridge club. This one is not signed by anybody. Yes, it is. I am somebody painted it. So it was a blank and somebody painted this at home or at a ceramic class. And when you see things like this, of course, as I said, it's hand painted and gilded. Uh, it could be from 1920, it could be from 1975. It's pretty. And then I'm going to sell a few mugs. Now this one you saw when I was with Vinny and Angie in uh, wherever we were, shopping. And this is the one that says, Clear thinking will stop accidents, New York District Safety Committee. That's what's on the back. So it's probably, it's probably uh, Newark, Delaware, not Newark, New Jersey. We already talked about the difference between the two. But it could be, it could be Newark, New Jersey. So really neat 1960s graphics on that. Take time to relax so you won't be lax. Brought to you by Xlax. And this is made by the Federal Glass Company. Again, that's just a really neat retro mug with a telephone, bell telephone symbol on the back. Hazel Atlas made this in the 1950s. They made a lot of children's wear. Children's, uh, wear. And uh, there's the HA on the bottom, bottom for Hazel Atlas. And this is called Ranger Joe. Ranger Joe Ranch Mug. And there would be all sorts of little plates and dishes and things that would go along with it. This was designed to bring the little tykes to the breakfast table and encourage them to drink their milk. A mug with a panda. I'm not sure why I decided to buy this, but somebody probably likes pandas. It says nothing else on it. And it says nothing on the bottom, but it's made by glass bake. Now, how do I know that? There's nothing on the bottom at all. Well, this mug has the word glass bake written on the bottom, and we can see that the two mugs have an identical base, and the handles are identical as well. So it just goes to show you once again, things got out of the factories stamped incorrectly. Sometimes things were stamped, sometimes they weren't. There's exceptions to almost every rule. And so unmarked glass make glass bake with a panda on it and that's in really good shape that mug and then this one from the bicentennial 1976 you know we're all sitting around just drinking coffee all day right or tea or Ovaltine so those are going to be up for sale as well okay um, what you can't see is a bunch of stuff over there and a bunch of stuff over there and a bunch of stuff up there. So I've got more things to bring you, some of the stuff you're going to like, and I'm working on a video called, well, I'm not sure what it's going to be called yet, but I'm going to put together a grouping of some of the most fantastic things that I have found in thrift shops that I don't necessarily plan on selling. Now, I might, if you twist my arm, I might sell them, but... These are items that are just unbelievable finds. You would never think you would find such a thing in a thrift shop. And I've got about five or six items that I want to highlight and show you. So that's another thing I'm working on. And at the beginning of the video, you saw my supervisor over here making sure I was rewiring something correctly. What was that? Well, that's coming up in a video as well. And it's not what you think it is. So I hope you'll stay with me. Everyone, I read all of your comments. I try to put hearts next to everyone. If I skip one or it escapes me, please don't be upset. I'm still reading them and I'm trying to make sure that I try to do that uh, as we're all just sort of hanging in there and trucking along as best we can. So from my house to yours and my teacup to yours, this is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now. I sure am glad Nancy got her man. That makes me feel very, very warm inside.